Hey there, this is Ryan Kingsline. So uh, this is going to be another informal look at some of the new features in Zebras 4 R5. So I got to ask first for your forgiveness because you're going to hear some background noise. I'm not in my recording studio. I'm, I'm out. I'm actually in India. I'm in my office in India or my temporary office, I should say. And uh, these crazy people at Pixelogic kind of put this out on us. Uh, with very, very little notice, no notice, and so I'm kind of catching up, but I really want to be exploring these features and be there to help you understand how these things all fit together so that we can start seeing some amazing stuff coming out of you, uh, out of some amazing artwork coming out. Uh, there's a couple of really simple aspects to this feature, and I've, I've covered some of those in other uh, uh, looks, but let me just go over it right now. Now, first off, this panel loops thing is right here. It's under the edge loop sub palette, and you'll see it's right below groups loops. And I've been harping on this. Edge loop was, I think, ZBrush 2 or 3. Okay, groups loops was uh, ZBrush 3, 3.1, and then panel loops is ZBrush 4, R4. And it's this is an evolution of this entire process. It's quite amazing. Uh, but at the end of the day, let's just talk about, let's just talk about uh, panel loops. At the end of the day, what this is about is extracting pieces of geometry. So I'm going to take this polygon all the way back to its origins there. So it's a little lower in subdivision levels. And uh, let's just hover over that. There we go. So this is a polysphere that I've brought in. You get it, Lightbox, Tool, Polysphere. So you'll get this exact same thing. I'm just going to delete lower, and then I'm going to turn Polyframe on, zoom in. And now, the way it works is with masks, or I should say with poly groups. So I'm going to create a poly group. Is my symmetry on? No. Nope. I'm going to create a poly group with some kind of shape, and uh, it's really kind of neat. You, I've done this a couple of times now, but let's try to get some facial features. See if we can get something kind of exciting or interesting out of this. So, get our gabella in there. Let's get a little nostril piece and. infraorbital triangle, and then zygomatic. Even when I'm doing this stuff, I can't stop talking about anatomy. And let's get a frontal eminence. That's really important for the design side of some of this. Okay, a little triangle. That's not the triangle. Okay, and then temporal line. So just something kind of odd and out there. Let's see what happens. And then I'm going to set my thickness to 0.07. I'm going to leave everything pretty much at default. And just click Panel Loops. Not doing anything. Okay. I keep forgetting this. Turn it, the mask into, into groups. So you can do that. You come in here to Poly Groups. You say... Uh, group masked. That's one way to do this. Okay, group unmasked. Let's undo this. Let's use the hotkey though. Control W. That's one that's going to really work for us. So when we're doing, when we've got our poly uh, groups created, then you come in and panel loop this. And let's just turn that poly frame off. And you can see we've got some real interesting stuff already created in this guy. So the way it would work is you come in with the move brush with mask by poly groups on, and you're going to be able to pull some out, push some in. And because that bevel is there, you're getting some automatic results. And so now what we're really facing is how complex can we make our mask so that we can start to get some really cool versions of things in here. Let's 
pull that nose out. Okay, and that's just a real simple example. That's really what it's doing at the end, at the at just at the at the base, most fundamental level. Now, another way to be doing this, let's just undo all of this. I'm going to turn polyframe on. That's an example of doing a face. But let's come in here, and I'm going to just start masking pieces off. So I'm going to press Control. I'm going to leave symmetry on, let's control W that, okay, and then I'm going to mask this out, and notice that the mask is not going to that other polygroup, and that's because I've got mask by polygroup on. So that's affecting all brushes, and that means that as I come in here, I'm automatically not getting anything attaching those other guys. So I can come in here real quick and see if I can create other little pieces to this puzzle. That start to have kind of an interesting feel to them. Just separating that out as well. And then Cool. So how do we do this? Now that we've got this really interesting kind of shape in here, we can also be going in with some of these other alphas, like let's say alpha 09. I'm holding control and doing that. And let's go hold control, go into drag rectangle. It's not wanting to do that one. Let's try this now. This is a slightly different option. Instead of just pressing um, Control plus W, now I'm going to say press Control plus Shift plus E. Okay, and this uh, edge loops the boundary. So this area will be edge looped and it'll be a much cleaner uh, poly group. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to pull that out. Whoops. Okay, Control Shift E, and almost. So that one wasn't working. Let's come into that alpha. I'm going to blur it. Hopefully, getting it a little bit larger. That's about as much as I'll probably want to get. Control Shift E. There you go. If I want to do any more, chances are it's going to be a little tough. So let's come in now and select something like um, Alpha 17. Let's move this one down here. That's kind of neat. I don't know what that'll do, but. Yeah, that's kind of good too. So now, not just using these pieces here, the, uh, sorry, not using the freehand mask, I'm actually able to get some complex shapes. So let's just see what this does. Same settings, panel loops. Turn that polyframe off. All right, and that's pretty interesting. I know something exciting is in there, but it's way too. Blah, 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 blah. So let's fix that up. And it's real simple. Just undo. Set your polish to 100. Leave that as a uh, open, or leave it as a circle, I should say, not a dot. Okay, and then panel loop it. All right. So we're getting some weirdness here, but we're getting some cleaner lines too. Much cleaner lines. So let's look. What's the weirdness coming from? I'm going to zoom in and let's say press uh, Control Z. And control shift the Z. Alright, there's some weird polygons right there. That happened with the um, 
uh, with our uh, edge looping. So let's undo that, and we'll undo back. Okay, and we can divide this one more time, delete lower. Hopefully that'll fix some of these areas that went wonky too. Let's just see what happens. Yeah, see it's those areas that are a little wonky. So, that is an issue with poly groups, or I mean with, uh, with that extruding or that uh, edge looping feature. So, my solution would be to ignore it. Let's see if we get better results here. And let's just try Control W. Okay, and then Control Shift E. Okay, and panel loops, and we get a better result. Okay. And good. And now you can come in and turn this mask by polygroup off, and we can look for where those problems are. And just fix them up. So this is a real powerful feature, especially if you're real careful about that stuff. But look at how edge looped that is. And now I'm going to come back in with mask by polygroup. And let's see, can we start telescoping some of this stuff? changing the shape around but I tell you this is in its just in its pure form here it's just amazing to be able to come in and start to design forms and just start to experiment with how things are laying out and on the surface here let's pull that piece down give that a little so this is all freehand here. So if you've seen me talk about how Pixel Logic develops, you'll you'll have probably heard me talk about the grid, the development feature grid. That is important for any software maker to be thinking about. How do you develop? Are you aware of the user, their matrix, you know, all of that stuff? And Pixel Logic is one of those companies that really just has it down. Okay, let's come in and grab a little there. Okay, so that's all I want to show you. Pretty fascinating how you can be pulling and working with this form and all of it in this kind of freehand way. I don't have to keep it circle. I can be moving things into ovals. A lot of stuff I can be doing. Move that in there. And I'm really excited to see what everybody creates because I think this is one of those features, which is why they really wanted to get it out. But it's one of those features that really allows you to express your creativity in a way that really only Pixel Logic could deliver for you. So, on that, I'm going to end it with a chorus of dogs outside, if you can hear them. And, uh, Happy holidays from India, and all the best if you're watching this at a later time. I will talk to you later, and I'm just going to sit here and move these chunks around. I mean, I've never been able to work with uh, hard surfaces this freely, this, this easily. It's never, never happened. So I'm, we're going to be seeing some awesome vehicles and crazy stuff being created. I know it. Look at that curve where you can just pull in using the move brush. Architects should be using this. And my wife is an architect. Oh, yeah. Frank Deary, watch out. ZBrush is coming for you. All right, guys. All the best. Good luck. Happy holidays. <laughs>